Hello everyone. Come with me on a photo walk as I explain the thought process behind the photographs I take. When I first began taking photographs in nature, my approach was to find as many subjects as I could in my local area, to document species and learn about everything I found. I was fascinated with macro photography, being able to see things up close with details I had never noticed before. But I slowly moved on to having a more defined objective, learning techniques and methods to create images incorporating some of the principles of design for more visual appeal. Since this dogwood tree was full of blooms and the flowers were a bit cluttered, and since I enjoy using a wide aperture, I wanted to find some blooms that stood out in the foreground while others receded into the background. The best way I could achieve this composition I had in mind was to isolate a set of blooms that were on the edge of the masses of flowers. I regularly use the rule of thirds to place the centre of interest off-centre, but also, I sometimes like to include an extensive area of negative space with a sizeable amount of lead room, which is the space in the direction the subject is facing. There is a natural triangle formed in this composition which leads to a sense of balance, and there are natural leading lines created by the contrasting dark branches which help to pull your focus to the centre of interest. When you are enjoying being outdoors in nature and don't always have time to consider visual design elements in your photograph, you should at least balance the rule breaking by creating value or worth with at least one strong point. Here you can see the flowers are more centered. The photo is more cluttered overall, but your eye is pulled to the focal point which is the center of the flower on the left. Because that area is in sharpest focus, while the rest of the image is out of focus. I was so happy to see these Texas mountain laurel trees blooming. I love the colour of their blooms and the shapes of their dark glossy green leaves. Once again, my approach was to isolate a cluster of flowers and create negative space in the direction that the blooms were facing. I've been experimenting for some time now with the concept of chiaroscuro. The term is the combination of two Italian words for light and dark and it describes the eye-catching effect of the intense contrast between light and dark. This adds mood and mystery to compositions, enhancing the main area of interest. Here is an example of a far less successful image for a different flower. These wisteria had only just begun to bloom and there were no leaves on the branches, nothing to contrast against the lavender coloured blooms. In the photograph, the branches from the vine are distracting and pull your eyes away from the bloom. It's much harder to achieve a successful composition when you have distracting elements apart from your centre of interest. It's probably better to pull back if you are dealing with a more chaotic scene, like with this magnolia tree. This enables all of the flowers and branches to be in focus at the same time, so the messiness is not too distracting. I still tried to make a somewhat pleasing composition by positioning the lens to capture a subtle triangle in the scene, where your eye is drawn towards the bloom at the top center, and that is where I focused the lens. Now back to the Texas mountain laurel. While examining the blooms to take a photograph with my telephoto lens earlier, I was drawn to take a closer look at the water drops all over the flowers. So I moved around in search of one that would be suitable for a macro shot. I was using the Olaclip macro lens system on my mobile phone. It's been a while as I usually shoot with the moment macro lens and some people had been asking about the Olaclip, so here we go. There is nothing extraordinarily special about this composition, but it's hard to mistake what the focal point is.
Do you see it? The northern mockingbird is the state bird of Texas. They are very common here and some say very annoying, but I love them. I find their ability to mimic other birds and mechanical sounds amusing. Again, not necessarily a great photo, but if you know me, you know I get excited if I can take a picture of a bird, even a bad picture. I did place the bird off center and it stands out because it's next to a dark tree trunk. For this group of tulips, I had trouble getting a good composition. I wanted an eye level shot, but the shorter tulips in view were hard to fit in. I didn't want to cut them off at the bottom and at the same time I needed some room above the taller tulips. So I took multiple images keeping focus on the same flower but moving the lens over slightly each time to keep room around the flowers. Then I stacked them together in Photoshop to create the final image. This American Robin was in a great spot for a close-up image, but I had a problem with the bright sunlight and the dark bird, so I just decided to enjoy watching it call out for a while. I started to walk away when the bird flew off and landed very close by on a different tree. This changed the direction of the light falling on the bird and made it a little easier to photograph. All the many branches in the background created another challenge. So I stood on my tiptoes to snap the photo in order to get closer to eye level with the bird and to get as few branches in the background as possible. Once again the bird is placed off center in the frame and I love how the small twigs on the branch the bird is perched on are leaning over and pointing in the same direction the bird is looking, almost like a continuous pattern. This is a bridal wreath bush. I loved the way the one branch was bending over creating a flowing curve, so I moved to take a photo of it from the side. I tried to fit as much as I could in frame without cutting off the tip of the branch on the left side. I also did not want the dark curved branch to lead out of the corner of the frame on the right side all the while making sure the entire branch with flowers was as level as possible. I thought about the golden spiral for the composition and set my focus on the cluster of little white flowers on the lower left. While scanning a bed of tulips, I noticed this little jumping spider. I've learned through trial and error that if a jumping spider jumps at your lens, to just hold still and within seconds the little guy will be back where he started. I used to try and help jumping spiders back to their original plant if they jumped at me, but now I know they produce a silk drag line right before jumping, which helps them return to their original spot. If you're lucky, you'll get a few tries before they decide to walk away and hide under a petal or leaf. You can see in the video clips, I struggle to focus very quickly on the spider while trying to place him in a good position within the frame. When he walked away, I could still see him for a while, so I put my 100mm macro lens on my big camera and took a photo of him to compare how he would look versus my phone macro lens which can get a lot closer. I found it quite difficult to focus on his teeny tiny dark eyes.
These mallard ducks did not mind me being close to them at all. So to enjoy the moment, I sat on some steps and watched them for a long time before taking a photo. Since I had the chance of being so close, I tried to fill the frame as much as possible with the duck and made sure that his eye was in focus so the viewer's eye would be drawn to it. While I was taking a picture of the duck, I heard a Carolina wren behind me. I quickly turned around and placed the bird off center to the left. I liked the way the branch the bird was holding onto divides the image, anchoring the bird on the left while a leaf in the same place on the opposite side on the same plane is in focus to balance the image. Then the other leaves lead your eyes back up in order to rest on the bird again. If you have watched some of my other videos, you know I love to follow ants around with my phone and macro lens. Their busyness fascinates me and it's a great way to practice getting a moving subject in focus. It's quite the challenge, as you can see here, I couldn't get it just right. I'm using the Moment macro lens this time. And just so you know, Photobombing and macro photography is real too. This dogwood tree was just starting to bloom. While I was trying to decide which of the small flowers to photograph, I found this little spider. It's always amazing to see how so many species of spiders and bugs are similar in colors to the plants they inhabit. I placed the subject on the top right third of the frame. I used my 100mm macro lens for this next photograph and focused on the center of the flower, leaving negative space where the flower was facing. However, in this case, there is too much leading room, leaving the image unbalanced. And the only way I can feel satisfied with the composition is to give the image a square crop. And wouldn't you know it, I found another little spider in another one of these flowers. And once again, the colouring of the spider helps it to stay well hidden because parts of the flower have a similar red colour. This little one was so interesting to watch, I didn't take the time to get a very clear photo of it. As you can see, the spider was very busy moving around, making it a little more difficult as well. And back to the 100mm lens, I wanted to place a flower against the sky to see the textures and colours underneath. I needed to lighten the image up considerably in post to see the lines and textures. Alternatively, I could have chosen to make it a silhouette against the sky, but I like the gradation of colours better. This time, all that negative space doesn't seem too unbalanced to me. Because of the shape of the flower and the curve the branch makes leading your eye to the flower, a square crop could look good with this one too though. The leaning tulips, they always catch my eye. What weighed them down like that, I wonder? At first I thought I would take a photograph as it was and then turn it right side up in post. But when I saw it in the frame in the original condition, I knew I had to portray it just as it was. For this one I used my 100-400mm lens. 
I positioned the lens in such a way that the leaves from other tulips in the foreground covered part of the stem of the tulip. Taking the shot at 400mm also helps to blur out the background, but I loved seeing the profile and contours of other tulip leaves faded in the background, creating a sense of movement and rhythm. This next shot is similar, only the tulip was upright and tucked away between other tulips. This time I used a macro lens. I placed the flower off centre and because the colour of the tulip is different and complementary to the green leaves, it stands out. I focused on the water droplets near the top left of the flower's main visible petal to bring attention to them and to show the freshness of spring. And once again, while scanning this group of tulips, I spotted another little spider. Have you ever tried to handhold your camera, looking through a macro lens while a tiny spider on its web is blowing in the breeze? Uh, yeah. This is the best I could do. This spider is very small. Its body is about 4mm wide. What a beautiful shiny little specimen. I always feel lucky and blessed when there are water drops on the flowers, because there are endless opportunities here for photographs. For each of the rest of the images, all I did specifically was to place the focal point within the rule of thirds. Creativity is a journey, and this journey is a walk filled with wonder and exploration. A process by which we are constantly looking, learning and interpreting what we see. Artists seek to create work that resonates with their viewers, but the ones who benefit the most are the artists themselves. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to go outside and get some sunshine wherever you are. See you next time.